Okay, let's talk about the Hall Effect, which is honestly one of my favorite uh, experiments in the history of science. And somehow or another, I either didn't learn about this or, or I didn't really understand the significance until actually I started teaching. So, um, but it's this, the, the experiment itself is really fundamental to our understanding of how modern electronics works because it really answered the question of was it electrons or positive charges that passed through a wire generating current? And as we all know, now the answer is electrons, the neg what we call negative particles, um, which, by the way, that itself is an unfortunate uh, convention that we just decided we're going to randomly give a negative sign to the charge that these electrons are. So really, if you think about current, what we call conventional current is the opposite direction of the electron flow. And it was Hall that actually discovered that. So let's talk about how you would actually figure that out. And this is just, it, it's really simple, but also really powerful how to determine this. So if, um, you know, if you haven't heard about this before, I, I, I encourage you to pause the video and to just kind of devise an experiment where you could actually measure whether it's positive or negative particles passing through a wire at, you know, leftwards or rightwards, whatever, respectively. So now that you've unpaused it, let's talk about how he did it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to provide a voltage source here. So we're going to link uh, a conductor here, a, a typical wire, and we're going to push current out, what we call conventional current. We're going to push current out that way. And we now come to a solid 2D conducting plate. So think about it in terms of just like a, a thin slab of copper where the charges that are passing through the wire here, now they can travel not only forwards, but they can also kind of separate left and right. So it's, you know, it doesn't have a vertical extent here. So in other words, if the particles are moving and they want to move up, they can kind of travel along the top lane there. If the particles are moving and want to travel down, they can travel on the, the bottom part of this slab of copper. And so now typically what would happen if you run this experiment, you know, whatever particles are moving, whether they're positive ones going that way or negative ones going that way, if you just crank the, the, the voltage on, whatever the thing is that's moving will more or less go right along the center here. Or at least an equal number will pass on the left and the right, or the top and the bottom, if you will, whether they're going that way or this way. However, once we change something about the setup, it's going to fundamentally change the prediction that we're going to see. So, um, first of all, how would you measure whether there's an excess of... Well, no, actually, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, so what we're going to do is... We're going to, um, when we turn on the, or before we turn on the voltage supply, we're going, to, we're going to induce an external magnetic field. So we're going to have some magnetic field that points into the board at all directions here, and now within the, within the uh, conductor as well. So I'm just not drawing it there so we can see the path of the, of the hypothetical particles. So there's a magnetic field that points into the board. And what's going to happen now? We can make two different predictions. And I'm going to do them in red and in... Eh. Uh, I'll do them in red and in green. Let's redraw this as... yeah. Okay. So if we have, uh, first of all, positive particles, which I'll do positive particles in green... So if we have positive charge carriers, in other words, if we view these as little positive guys coming out and positive particles running through the wire in the clockwise direction, these positive particles, as they move forward with a velocity v, now you see where this is going here, v crossed with b gives them a upwards deflection. So these positive particles are going to deflect upwards and they're going to pile up on the top surface here. So if, in fact, it's positive particles that are going through the wire, they're all going to be deflected towards the top part of this copper slab here. However, let's consider the other case. Let's consider negative charge carriers. And we'll do this in red. So in this case, if we have negative guys, it's going to push out the negative particles to the right. And those, ne those I already wrote E, I don't mean to do that. Those negative particles are going to travel counterclockwise through this wire, 
but they, they both produce what we call the conventional current of that. So as these negative particles get spat out here, let's consider what they're going to do. These negative particles, I'm using my left hand now because they have a negative sign, they're going to feel a magnetic force as well, V crossed with B, and it also pulls them up. So the negative particles now are going to get deflected upwards, and the negative particles are what's going to pile up on the top now. But isn't that interesting? So no matter what it is, they're both going to feel a deflection upwards. So if you're physically trying to, like, if, you're, if you, like, paint a random charge carrier, like, green or whatever, and if you try to watch it through this, what you're, no matter what, which way it's going, you're going to see it rises up in this section of wire. No matter what's, whether it's going that way or that way. So, we, it's almost like they both get the same prediction, except there's a very easy way to know which particles they are rising towards the top. And here's how. So, again, the magnetic field is still there. I'm just getting rid of this so that we can actually, like, draw what's going on. Uh, and I will add it back a little bit here. So we have a magnetic field. That's all I'll show there. And if we have positive charge carriers, those positive charge carriers will pile up on the top. And now the way to measure that is we hook up a voltmeter. So I'm going to take some other uh, external voltmeter. I'll just I'll draw it in blue. Now I'm going to write the voltmeter here. And it's going to tell me there is a positive differential going from the, you know, from the top to the bottom. So I've got the positive lead there and the negative lead there. So it'll tell me there's a positive differential if all those positive charges are piling up on the top part of that copper conductor. Now, let's consider what happens here if, if it's actually negative particles that are passing through the wire instead. So we have that same voltmeter hooked up, but now if those negative particles are coming from the right and they're piling up, instead of a positive excess on that top surface, we're going to build up a negative excess. And that's the measurable difference here. That voltmeter will now read a negative differential, again, from the top to the bottom plate here. And that tells us, this is exactly what we find, that tells us that it is, in fact, negative charge carriers going against what we typically could call the conventional current. So this was the measurement that we found, negative charge carriers. Because we see that it's the negative particles being pulled upwards, not the positive ones, creating that negative uh, potential difference there. So isn't that really cool? It uses the same prediction to see the, to, to actually determine which of the particles it was. They're both going to rise up. Let's measure that voltage difference after we've separated them magnetically. So I think it's a really nifty experiment. And this is, in fact, how we know that it's negative. Now we call them electrons, of course, valence electrons, in fact, that pass through a, a conducting plate and not uh, positive ones.